except for uh, Selector McCoy, who's had some work commitments tonight. We're going to start up by transmitting a Treasury Warrants 53, 53A, 54, 54A, 55, 1, 1A, 2, and 2A. Move the warrants as read by the chairman. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Unanimous. We have no minutes to approve tonight, and our first appointment is with Andrea Kaur, a paralegal customer... Christopher E. Coleman, Esquire, PC, on behalf of Hong Tai Inc., doing business as China Walk, request a common particular license for property located at 329 Main Street. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Andrea Cole. Today, uh, we are here to, for sitting the board to approve our application for the transfer of common virtuous license. Um, actually, it's just for the change of ownership. The owner is going to keep everything the same, even though the business name is the same. Uh, hours of operation is the same, and the type of menu is also the same. So we are happy to answer if the board have any questions. Okay. Any recommendations? Uh, Ms. Chen, we have a recommendation from the health director uh, approving uh, the issuance of the common virtual <coughs> license for Hong Tai, uh, again, doing business as China Walk. And also um, a recommendation from Mr. Spaulding, Inspector of Buildings, uh, who's reviewed the application for the property. And, uh, there are no outstanding zoning issues. If the board um, decides to approve the request, the applicant is going to need to submit a certificate of insurance sure. uh, prior to any release of the license. Yep, definitely. Any other questions, comments, or a motion from the board? So unless, uh, unless there's anybody in the audience that ha convinces me otherwise, I'd uh, move to approve the request subject to the uh, delivery of the certificate of insurance as outlined by the manager. I'll second. Motion made and second. Is there any con anybody out there that wants to speak on behalf of this? Right. Okay, I have a motion made and second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our 710 appointment is with Joseph M. Gleason, Verizon New England, Inc. His reason for public hearing relative to the request of Verizon New England, Inc. and Reading Municipal Light Department to place one pole on Lexington Street. Mr. Gleason, how are you tonight? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the record, my name is Joseph Gleason. I'm a right-of-way agent with Verizon New England, Inc. Our office is located at 28th Diana Lane in Drake. At, uh, the petition before you this evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, is a request of Verizon to place a, um, uh, a new pole, basically a mid-span pole, on the southerly side of Lexington Street, uh, adjacent to the driveway at number 12 Lexington Street. Uh, the locus of this new pole will be approximately 166 feet from the center line of um, Cunningham Street, uh, south of, uh, excuse me, east of uh, Cunningham Street. The, the reason that Verizon is requesting this pole locus is that um, currently the premises at 12 uh, Lexington Street is serviced by a pole on the northerly side of the street, which is a little bit further up from the driveway. It's causing a real problem for service 212 uh, <laughs> Lexington Street because the, um, the clearance has become very low. The, 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 the wires are sagging, and they're uh, actually um, snaking through the, 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 the low uh, foliage uh, adjacent to the driveway. And I believe the property owner actually placed their own kind of um, device in the middle of their lawn to sort of lift up the, uh, the wires from uh, sagging. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to place this um, new pole, 284 over 4 and 1 half, which is like a mid-span pole, uh, at the dri corner of the driveway to uh, effectively alleviate that clearance. In addition, if you allow us to place this pole, we'll also be remedying another problem at that location. Um, there's a, an abutting property where the lines are currently crossing. This is an aerial encroachment and we'd like to alleviate that aerial encroachment across the property uh, that's abutting this property and um, bring the service uh, from that new pole into the property at 12 uh, Lexington Street. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Questions, comments from the board? If I may, yeah, uh, basic question procedurally. The existing pole that right now is the source of lines that are sagging low, what happens to that pole after this new pole goes in? Oh, that pole is going to stay. It stays that in place. That pole will remain That pole will remain in place and will actually will be running service from the existing pole, 284 over 4, on the north side of Lexington Street to pole 284 over 4 and 1 half. And then from that new pole, we'll be running the service into 12 
uh, Lexington Street. Oh, I see. Okay, I misunderstood. Yeah, because actually, the, I may, may, may I may not have mentioned this. The currently, service is coming from 284 over 4 on the northerly side of the street. So it crosses all the way over across the street and into the residence. Which yeah, is what's causing that? It's sag. a real. I went out and looked at it. So it's a, it's a. It's about as bad a sag as I've ever seen. Okay. You know, it's 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 no. Not only is it sagging, but the but the property owners actually placed something there to prop up the lines, and it's still sagging. So it's a real it's a real danger out there. So. Any questions or comments from the audience? Hearing none, uh, entertain a motion. I would move uh, to approve the position uh, of the new poll on uh, Lexington Street servicing residence number 12 as, uh, as petitioned in our documentation. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Probably should wait a couple minutes. Oh, she's here. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's not a public hearing around. Oh, it's not? Okay. No. And our 715 appointment is with Pamela McKenzie, <coughs> Treasurer Collector for Compensation Balance Agreement and Banking Services. Good evening, Pamela. Good evening. How are you tonight? Fine, how are you? Yeah. Um, on June 9th, I issued a request for proposals for the town's banking services, uh, which include the depository, payroll, and accounts pay excuse me, accounts payable for a three-year term, uh, which is scheduled to begin on August 2nd. Um, I sent this proposal out to, by request to nine banking institutions, five of which responded. Um, based on these proposals, um, I recommend that the contract be awarded to the lowest bidder, which was Eastern Bank. Uh, they came in at zero cost. Um, they have, were awarded our contract last time around, and they truly have been a zero cost banking service for the town for the last three years. That's who it would last. No costs, no problems, no issues. So no. no. Any questions or comments from the board? Mr. Chairman, this is in keeping with the responsibilities vested in the Board of Selectmen at town meeting where they need to approve any uh, banking services that the town uh, goes forward with. And as uh, mm -hmm. uh, Pam indicated, uh, we have been using uh, Eastern <coughs> Bank and, uh, for the past three years and have had very good success with them, and they are obviously the low bidder, as you can see by the uh, summary sheet. Mr. Chairman, just, uh, the last time that we talked about this contract, I think I asked a similar question. I believe I know the answer, but for informational purposes for the public, if you could just speak to uh, the fact that they're adequately insured. Uh, with all of the, you know, they happenings are. in the banking They are. They have the all the required years. insurances to protect the town. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Is that it? That's it. Do we need to form a motion? Uh, yes, please. Okay, we'd entertain a motion. I'd, I'd move to uh, accept the recommendation and execute a compensating balance agreement with Eastern Bank. I'll second the motion. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Thank you. Great. Thank you. Our 725 appointment is with Michael Morris, the town accountant, for authorization to borrow $935,000 over a 10 year period for the purchase of an aerial ladder truck for the fire department in accordance with general laws, chapter 44, subsection 7 9. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I make one co one correction? I apologize. You have it listed at 935. It should be 975. <coughs> I apologize to the board for that. We've made the correction on the official copies uh, that have been posted. And this is what was voted on at town meeting. Yeah, that's right. Mr. Morris. Uh, I think this is rather simple. Under Chapter 44, Section 7 slash 9, um, there is a pile of um, rules for investing, no, I'm sorry, for borrowing money. And in the case of the ladder truck, it is included in there with all kinds of other equipment. And to be rather conservative, they put down a minute, you know, a five-year limit on the borrowing. You can amend that for up to 15 years, depending on the useful life. In this case, clearly, 
for a new ladder truck, the useful life is far longer than five years. It can actually go to 20 and 25 years. We are recommending that it be increased to 10 years. Um, that corresponds to the way we want to set up the debt for several other pieces of debt that we are issuing. Um, it'll make it much easier budgetarily, and um, with a good interest rate, we should be able to keep our costs in very good shape. Is there anything you want to say on that? Uh, no, I just just to echo what Mr. Um, Morris is saying, this, this uh, dates back to the 2009 uh, annual town meeting when the town authorized the <coughs> borrowing of $975,000 for this purpose and that those funds will be sufficient and uh, again it is the um, the bond issue is expected shortly we will be uh, conferencing with uh, standard and Poor's, which I expect will uh, confirm the rating that they just gave on the town of double uh, a uh, plus and that will take place a little later this week and this is one of the last pieces that we need to go uh, uh, to go forward with uh, with our authorization it's a unless the, unless the board has questions I'd like to suggest a motion that would meet bond councils um, uh, that would satisfy the needs of bond council okay all right so I, I would recommend uh, the adoption of a motion acknowledging that the <coughs> maximum useful life of the aerial ladder truck to be purchased for the fire department be financed with the proceeds of $975,000 borrowing authorized by the affirmative vote of the town um, as reflected in Article 6B of the May 2nd, 2000 an annual town meeting for a maximum useful life of 10 years pursuant to General Law Chapter 44, Section 7, Subsection 9. Um, and if if that motion could be put on the table, Mr. Chairman, I can just explain one thing that looks a little bit strange. Okay, you said 2000. You meant 2009. 2009. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Any other questions, comments, or a motion from the board? All right. I'll make the motion as read by the town manager, the fiscal officer, that um, we move forward with the um, proposal that he just read. I'd like to second the motion after. Uh, I'd like. I do have a general question, um, so I'm not. I, it won't impact my seconding the motion, but the question is, this was put forth or voted by the town at town meeting in 2009. Right. Uh, from that point till today, um, you know, we based this $975,000 on research and analysis that I imagine the chief and other uh, parties had done at that time, based on the equipment and, and whatever. From that point till today, have there been changes? Has there been a constant evolving uh, Relationship, or are we still planning on buying the same truck we were planning on buying in 2009? No, the truck the truck went out for bid. Okay. And the, the original um, estimate was actually one million one hundred thirty thousand dollars higher. Yeah, and so we did go out for bid. We got a pretty favorable uh, bid. The truck is being manufactured, and um, we expect delivery before the end of the uh, the end of the year. Okay. Thank you. I wasn't sure how that process worked. Yeah, Thank and the you. point I wanted to make was um, because of the way the uh, Mass General Laws work and uh, at the recommendation of Bond Council, we put in maximum life of 10 years, uh, even though, in fact, obviously this uh, area ladder truck will uh, likely last for up to 30 years as the, uh, as the current one has. Uh, but this is in keeping with the, uh, the municipal indebtedness that's uh, a section of the uh, of the general laws. Okay. So I will second the motion. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> oh. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> this is a meeting. Yeah, I mean, it's up to you if you want me to do the other stuff. Or you, you can go to that. It's not quite being 7.30 yet. Why don't we have uh, Tom Manager start the communications? Chairman, uh, we have a memorandum from Don Alonis that the uh, Superintendent of Public Works 
uh, relative to the Route 38, Route 62 intersection uh, issue that the board discussed at their last meeting on June 28th, uh, where they expressed some concern about the way traffic was moving at that intersection. Um, <clears throat> Representatives from the Police Department and the Public Works Department met with uh, representatives from the Massachusetts Department of Transportation traffic engineers um, at the site, and the purpose of the meeting was to review the operation of the traffic signals and attempt to determine if they were operating properly. Uh, as you recall, it's been the town's opinion that the railroad signal preemption was not operating as designed. Uh, during a train crossing signal preempt, the signals are designed to function uh, in a manner such that uh, at Main Street at Route 38, Burlington Avenue at Route 62 eastbound, Main Street southbound, and Church Street, Route 62 westbound, uh, all should have a green light. Uh, the Massachusetts Department of Transportation and Engineers indicated that they would investigate the controller for the signals to determine if they were functioning correctly. Uh, the investigation is now complete, and it revealed that the signals were not operating as designed during the railroad preempt phase. Uh, Mike Harris, who is the District 4 Traffic Operations Engineer, indicated that only the Burlington Avenue eastbound green phase was operating during the, uh, correctly during the preempt phase. And as a result, traffic was not allowed to proceed on Church Street westbound. Uh, Mr. Karras has informed <coughs> uh, Superintendent Onisat that the traffic controller has been reset to function properly. And it is his opinion that the traffic flow through the intersection should improve with this correction. Uh, hopefully it has. We'll continue to monitor the uh, situation, but this was uh, a direct result of the discussion I think that Selectman McCoy had uh, initiated. We have a letter from Representative Maselli responding to the board's request uh, for his position on House Bill 4374, an act to require producer responsibility for the collection, reuse, and recycling of discarded electronic products and House Bill 726, an act relative to producer responsibility of mercury added lamps. Uh, Representative <coughs> Sally writes that he sees no basis for opposing either of these pieces of legislation and that he will be supporting the bills when they are to be voted upon. We have a memorandum from uh, Leo Norton, the Administration <coughs> and Finance Division official from the MWRA regarding the FY 2011 water and sewer assessments. Uh, he indicates that overall uh, the combined water and sewer rate revenue uh, increase over fiscal year 10 assessments uh, is at 1.49 percent. This is a, uh, one of the lowest increases. In terms of the town of Wilmington, we're actually seeing a decrease in sewer. Um, <clears throat> just a slight decrease, but a, it, it does go down percentage-wise by about 1.1 percent from a million nine eighty-five to a million nine sixty-three. Uh, we're also seeing the first assessments with regard to water, and in this case, it's only a hundred thousand dollars, so it's really minimal at this point. The real information is that there is no expectation of any increase uh, in water rates as we go forward. In fact, they've been established with no increase. <coughs> And finally, we have correspondence from Jane Lyman of Comcast, uh, who has given us a cable services update uh, regarding um, additional uh, services that are going to be uh, provided uh, in the various uh, packages that are offered to the customers. They're going to be providing uh, all of this information through a uh, bill message uh, that will be uh, uh, descriptive in terms of uh, new charges and changes in service. Uh, in addition, uh, they've indicated that they have begun to offer new services in the community, uh, which include um, uh, services or, uh, relating to um, uh, Latino programming, uh, including Hispanic Starter, Multi Latino Extra, Multi Latino Max, and Multi Latino Ultra. And again, this information will be provided uh, to their subscribers. Okay. We're back to our 7.30 appointment now. Mr. Charles Lyons, the Superintendent, Director of Shawshin Valley Regional Vocational Technical School District for health, to uh, give us some information on the Health and Life Sciences Wing and the renovation project. How are you, Mr. Mr. Lyons, how are you doing tonight? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. <coughs> Pleasure to be here. 
Let me, uh, if I could, like to pass out two pieces of information. I think I've got enough copies for everybody, including Mr. McCoy. The first, uh, <clears throat> the first piece of information is just a update on uh, Shawshank Tech. And if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to just flip over a few of the charts and if any members have any questions, they can call me or they can call uh, the two outstanding Wilmington residents that you uh, represent the interest of you on the uh, Shawshank School Committee. I'm joined here by Attorney Robert Peterson, who's been on our committee for 16 years, and Mr. James Gillis, who's been on our committee for 17 years. Uh, <clears throat> the, first, the first page just shows you the history of our budget for the last six years and what's happened to municipal assessments. And the assessments include, I might add, all capital costs associated with the school districts. Uh, for the last uh, three years, our assessment overall has, has gone up 0%. Uh, what's even more amazing in the next two pages is that our cost per pupil uh, for attending Shawshank to the member communities has gone down from six years ago. The, the third page gives you a more graphic indication of what started to happen beginning in fiscal year 08 with the advent of the modifications to the Chapter 70 program. In effect, uh, the two biggest beneficiaries in that new changes to the Chapter 70 program happened to be Shawshank Tech uh, in the town of Wilmington. And so the cost of the local taxpayers is indicative uh, of the savings. The next page shows the actual per pupil expenditures over the past four years of all the school districts within the Shawshank Tech region in Shawshank Tech. Shawshank Tech has seen an increase in enrollment. Our expenditure per pupil is obviously higher uh, than the average expenditure because it's vocational technical education. You can't put 22 students in a metal fab program. They call them nubsy or, or stubby uh, after a while. But, but comparatively speaking, our costs have been held in check. Our expenditures, this actual ex end of the year expenditure reports um, shows an increase of about 14% over a four year period compared to an average of 25% uh, for member towns. The next page <coughs> shows that in graphic detail. What I think is a very important chart is how do we spend in terms of net school spending vis-a-vis -vis foundation. Uh, the state recognizes that the cost of educating students in a vocational technical program is a lot higher, for example, than educating students in an elementary school program or a kindergarten program. So the state assigns a value of what's the average cost of educating pupils in Massachusetts. At Shawshank Tech, we spend about 118% of the statewide average vis-a-vis -vis our foundation budget. The state average is about 115.3%. Uh, all of our towns exceed that expenditure per pupil average vis-a-vis -vis foundation. The highest is uh, Bedford that spends about 156% of foundation, uh, followed by Burlington that spends about 140% of foundation. Bill Ricca spends about 122% of foundation. Wilmington about 119%, Shawshin 118.1%, and Tewksbury about 108% the fiscal year 10. The next page shows you how we've tried to keep the capital cost in check, <coughs> including uh, the issuance of the bond issue uh, that was uh, voted by the school committee back on June 8th. Our, our, the, the red shot shows you the portion of our overall assessment, the $16.5 million, which is attributed to capital cost. Um, the, blue, the blue line here shows you what our capital budget has been. And it's anywhere from 900,000 to a projected uh, budget of about a million one uh, in fiscal year 13. The next two pages are st strictly student data, data pages that have been uh, taken from uh, uh, Department of Education reports. Uh, it shows you, first of all, that students love coming to Shoshin Tech. Uh, we have one of the highest uh, actual average daily uh, attendance rates in the state. Uh, 1,310 students last year on average came to school 96.4% of the days in session. Our dropout rate <coughs> last year was 0.5%. It's one-sixth of the average dropout rate of high school students in Massachusetts. The rate last year was about 2.9%. The first time in 10 years that the state had a dropout rate of less than 3%. We had the lowest dropout rate in the state in 2006, 2007 of 0.2%. 
The next chart shows you the four-year graduation rate. These are the students who begin school as freshmen and graduate as seniors. Graduation rate at Shashin Tech last year uh, was over uh, 95 percent uh, for uh, 2008. Uh, obviously, uh, the town of Burlington was a little bit uh, larger than ours or better than ours, but on average, our graduation rate is terrific. What this shows you is kids don't drop out. They love coming to school and they graduate on time. Our special ed graduation rate, and by the way, the state average is about 80 percent for high school students. We're at about 95 percent. For special needs students, the state average of students graduating within a four-year period is 60 percent. Our average last year was over 96 percent. And about 26 percent of our students are special education. The next chart shows you our MCAS performance in English language arts. This is the percentage of students who scored advanced to proficient uh, up through 2009. Now you're going to read about the 2010 data in about two weeks when it's released. All I can tell you without violating any confidentiality from the Department of Education is our 2010 data is better than our 2009 data. <clears throat> it shows you our math performance. We went from about 58% scoring advanced to proficient in math in 2005 to 84% in 2009. And this is with a population of 26% special education. If you look on the, uh, the next chart, this is the percent of disabled MCAS test takers in 2009 compared to the five high schools in our district. On average, Wilmington, Bedford, and Bill Ricker have about 15% of their sophomores with IEPs. Burlington has about 11%, Tushby has about 12%, and Shushin Tech has over 26%. So even when you include these statistics, uh, Shoshin Tech's percentage of students who scored advanced and proficient compared to all our local high schools, we, we, we match up pretty evenly, and we're very proud of that. Um, compared to vocational technical high schools, we had the highest mean score in the state across all categories, English language arts, science, and mathematics in 2009. We were number one in every single category. I don't know how we're going to do in 2010, but in terms of the growth model that the state used a year ago to compare 388 districts, where our growth was in terms of where students were when they came to Shawshin and where they ended up when they took the MCAS exam, we had the fifth highest growth rate in the state for English language arts. We're in the 73rd percentile. Again, I can't, um, I'm not at liberty to tell you how 2010 was, but it was better than 2009 and those will be coming up. So the first piece of information I wanted to share with you is what you get for and what you pay. And the biggest winner over the last six years has been the town of Wilmington. Your, your expenditure per pupil to Shawshin Tech has gone from somewhere in the neighborhood of $15,000 down to about $12,600. And that's primarily because of the changes in the Chapter 70 formula um, that we really effectively, working with Mike Kyra and others, lobbied for in 2007. You know what I'd like to do is give Shoshin Tech's finest a copy of this for the records. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> the next piece of information is just a description of the um, addition uh, that we've been planning for the last year and a half. Uh, and we're very pleased to report has been approved by the Mass School Building Authority uh, for funding. Uh, the first page shows you what the addition will look like. And if you come into Shawshin Tech at the back right side of our building, uh, that's exactly where the diesel program is located. We started a process about a year and a half ago when we applied for a federal stimulus grant uh, for this addition. We were encouraged to do so uh, by the uh, Patrick Murray administration when Congress was considering putting money aside for school construction. We were told that those projects that could be done in 180 days from concept design uh, to shovel on the ground would receive highest priority. And in the House of Representatives, 
actually put in the federal stimulus program about $30 billion initially for school construction uh, projects. They weren't funded uh, by the Senate, and therefore the, the plausibility of, of, of the federal government funding this project died. But we were able, because we had gone through conceptual design, we were able to, to file a very timely statement of interest with the Mass School Building Authority. And as part of that statement of interest was an analysis of the types of jobs that would be in the Merrimack Valley over the next 10 to 15 years. And we took a look at our automotive diesel mechanic type positions, which have been getting less and less. We don't have as many mechanic bays, for example, at gas stations that we had 10, 15 years ago. And we've seen a, um, a closing of overall car dealerships in Massachusetts. About 50% of the car dealerships have closed in the last three years in Massachusetts. There's the plausibility of employment in the mechanical, mechanical automotive diesel mechanic trade areas has lessened considerably. So what we decided to do was to take a look at those areas where high school students, upon graduation from high school, could be gainfully employed and touch the middle class. And what we found out looking at labor market analysis material um, that was provided by a uh, report from Labor and Workforce Development of the Commonwealth of Mass, there were three areas that we seized upon. Uh, one of those areas was um, health technology field, LPNs, et cetera. Uh, another part was a, a dental technician field, and the third was a medical uh, technician field. And as you can see in the material that we submitted to the state, we took a look at all of those employments, the articulation agreements we've had with various colleges at Shaw Sheen for some of these programs, and we wanted to expand the number of programs offered at Shaw Sheen in the life science, medical science field. Uh, Shaw Sheen has a 260,000 square foot facility. Uh, you can eat off the floors in this building. Um, there are 1,300 students, 1,310 to be exact, that we serve from five communities. Uh, we've done a number of upgrades in the last 20 years. We've had three other bond issues that we've passed in the last 20 years. Uh, the building is structurally sound and will be fiscally in great shape for the next 20 to 25 years. The part of the building that we're going to be remodeling is about 12,000 square feet. It's the diesel mechanic program. It's completely underutilized as educational space at this point. Um, and we want to uh, expand curricula to meet career training in the 21st century. Uh, the proposed area for renovation includes that diesel area of 12,000 square feet. It currently rolls about 25 students. We'll be able to serve about 115 students in this new addition. The new addition is only going to be 2,000 square feet. We'll have open floor area allowable for flexible partition layout. We have high roof structure in that end of the building, so we'll be able to have classrooms upstairs as well. We have um, open exterior parking lot adjacent to the shop, allows for this 2,000 square foot addition. Uh, we put a new roof on three years ago, remodeled the school with new air conditioning units as well, and we've had about a half a million dollars in electrical upgrade. So uh, I think this will be the last renovation project that I'll probably be associated with, and so this one is going to last for quite a, quite a number of years. If you look at the map of the school here, uh, it's, it's to the right side uh, of the map or the right corner of the map. Um, here's a bad picture of our current diesel program. Uh, we will be uh, selling all this equipment uh, by public bid and in, in inviting uh, folks to uh, come down and purchase it. Uh, we'll be advertising this uh, consistent with Inspector General recommendations. There's a picture of the existing uh, outdoor space uh, of the diesel program where we'll be putting a 2,000 square foot addition. We highlight uh, for you uh, the additional entrance in the area of renovation uh, on, a, on another uh, flow chart of the school. Um, we show you uh, the area of renovation in the area of addition. There's a uh, picture of the school. It's so interesting, the folks who built this school back in 67 did a great job. There's 92 acres here on this site. The school currently uses only uh, 21 acres. So 25, 30 years from now, when they build a new Shawshank Valley Technical High School to meet the needs of that economy, you'll be able to build a brand new school up on the hill, 
can you be able to use the existing facility for recreational space? Because by then the facility is going to be about 70 years old, and it might be need to be rebuilt. But the planners who built this facility just did a marvelous job. Uh, KBA Architects has been hired and approved by, by the School Building Authority as our architectural firm. They did an artistic review of the uh, outdoors. I'm going to give the chairman a colored copy, though, because I didn't know how to run the color printer today. We have one. I just didn't know how to run it. So that gives you a better idea. You can share that with the members of what it would look like, the outside of the facility. Uh, it will have an uh, office-type atmosphere, like a clinician's office or, or a technician's office when you walk into the facility. Uh, we'll be able to use it at night for an expanding program. Uh, with our, uh, we have a licensed practical nursing program at night at no cost to the district, where we uh, are currently uh, graduating 40 or so uh, licensed practical nurses. Uh, they come to school from 4.30 or 5.30 in the afternoon until 9.30 at night, and they do their clinical uh, uh, rounds in hospitals on weekends. It's all tuition based. Uh, there'll be service in this area as well. Uh, the schedule is uh, this sheet here. And if I could just take a minute to explain the schedule. Um, we, we are through design development or conceptual design development. And now that all of the towns have decided not to call town meetings, uh, we will be getting into construction documents. Uh, we hope that securing bids and securing contracts in December of this year, and we hope this will be constructed and open in September of 2011. Um, we're using sustainable design approaches, specifying green materials that are low VOC and uh, require minimal maintenance. Um, we'll incorporate, consistent with MSBA recommendations, uh, Skylights in the facility, minimizing uh, the need for, um, for, for lighting and saving on electricity. We have some concerns moving forward. Uh, we think the schedule now is pretty concise and pretty tight. We've already done soil contamination in tests, and we have no soil contamination. We did that back in 93. We eliminated all our underground oil tanks in the building, with the exception of the uh, the, the tank at Auto Body, which is tested every year. Uh, and the only place we had oil contamination was around automotive. Uh, and, uh, uh, but we've never had a problem around diesel, and the preliminary analysis indicates there's no oil erosion. Um, we will have some noise in construction during the ongoing uh, program, but that's going to be right next to our carpentry program, our HVAC program, our plumbing program, and our electrical program, and they better get used to the noise anyways because that's what they're going to experience when they become in the field. The last page shows you the total project cost. Um, we receive, we're going to receive about 56 percent uh, MSBA. We've already been approved for that uh, by the Mass School Building Authority. Uh, in their May meeting, they approved this project and they funded it. We'll be borrowing about $2.1 million, uh, consistent with some excellent recommendations from the collective wisdom of the five town managers. We'll be doing a 10-year bond issue. Um, we will be eating the first two years of principal and interest cost uh, because our uh, finances are in order. Uh, I anticipate uh, having a certification of excess and deficiency, which is free cash, of close to 4.96 percent of operating budget, which would mean that we would be able to have sufficient funds certified this July uh, to pick up the principal and interest costs of fiscal year uh, 11, which is rather minimal. And I think I gave you paperwork a few weeks ago on that in fiscal year 12. We presented that fiscal plan to the school committee on June 8th. The school committee voted unanimously uh, to authorize the debt for this project. Uh, we then informed the towns of that decision. Uh, the towns, under the law, have the right to reject the project if they want to call a town meeting within 60 days. Uh, very intelligent and wise boards of selectmen has recognized the value of this project and supported it, and we appreciate the support uh, that you gave us uh, a few weeks ago. So with that, I'd like to uh, invite any questions you may want to entertain, and thank you for the opportunity to be here. Very, very nice presentation, a lot thank of information. You. Any questions, comments from the board? 
Uh, my, <clears throat> my comment would be that uh, I, I certainly appreciate uh, Mr. Lyons and members of the committee being here. Um, to my way of thinking, the most valuable uh, portion of the information was really uh, publicly uh, making the points that you did about the uh, about the careers that you're trying to trying to accommodate, and that uh, it's based in it's based in research and logic. It's not just based in some abstract uh, white tower kind of uh, ivory tower kind of mindset. You know, it's it's all about trying to educate kids and give them a chance to make a living in the workplace, give them what the workplace is going to hold for them in a few years. So um, I think that's uh, very beneficial for not only the board, but the general public to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> I'd just like to say, uh, Mr. Lyons, and the board of directors, that you did an outstanding job through the years. Um, there's no doubt about it at that presentation that you just gave us that uh, your achievements have been very well um, over, over, um, stated as far as um, the production and the activity that you're getting out of it. I think the ideas that you're giving as far as the diesel shop trading to the health, that's where it's going to be at, no doubt. I think it's giving the kids a, a great future with the, with the needs of uh, education going into a, uh, a job or occupation to make a good career. I think it's a wise choice. I think you did planning um, um, unbelievable. The presentation, you said that a new school, 70 years, this one here, but still going to have a use. Um, build a new school in that hill. Uh, I just think your thoughts are so far and beyond that you guys ought to have a um, great, great, um, all five communities should be overwhelmed with the um, production that you people are given and uh, achieving, even through the um, education and the um, outpatients, of, I mean, out products of, of uh, um, the pupils that are graduating with those statistics. So again, um, all hats off. Thank you. I, uh, I think sometimes the, the Shawshank Tech is the a tremendous resource that many of us sort of take for granted. It's out there, we know it's there, um, but this opportunity that your presentation tonight for me, and I suspect like many people watching, um, really punctuates and reinforces that message, uh, that, that reality, which is what a tremendous resource we have uh, in having access to that, uh, that institution for learning. So. I hope that uh, children and uh, parents now, by virtue of he hearing this, recognize, if they didn't already, um, what a great resource it is. I also wanted to draw our attention. I was really, one of the slides uh, in your first hunk of slides talks about the percent of students scoring advanced or proficient in the 2009 MCAS. And, you know, there was, there was a notion in my mind that thought, well, you know, because of the different types of education that goes on at the Shashin versus traditional, quote unquote, I didn't expect that you'd be right in line, and not only you were right in line, you're, you're, you're above some, so kudos. I, I, that, that was a very pleasant surprise, and I'm, I'm embarrassed to say I was uh, surprised by that. What I'd like for you to help me understand better, because clearly I'm not uh, as intelligent as some of the kids that go to school here, uh, I'm looking at the net school spending as compared to foundation budgets. I'm not sure I understand the language of that slide. Yeah. What does that pertain to? <clears throat> when the state establishes the Chapter 70 fund, they recognize that it costs X amount of dollars, let's say, let's say $5,000 to educate students in a part-time kindergarten program. It may cost $7,500 to educate students in an elementary school program. It may cost $8,500 to educate students in a junior high school, middle school program. And it may cost $10,000, $11,000 to educate students in a high school program. And in a vocational technical program, it'll cost $15,000. And the reason is, is because within the formula, the state recognizes that your per pupil ratios uh, at a chalkboard high school education in the formula is 17 to 1. In a vocational technical program, it's 10 to 1. Uh, in an elementary school, believe it or not, it's 22 to 1. And in junior high school, for some crazy reason, it's 25 to 1. So the state gives each type of education on average, a funding source. So in, in, in Wilmington's case, uh, your, your uh, foundation budget might be about, I'm guessing here, $8,900. But I'm not that far off at $8,900. At Shashin Tech, our foundation budget is probably around $13,500, okay? And so when the state takes a look at what do you actually spend vis-a-vis -vis foundation, mm. the average district in the state 
the average, spends at 115% of foundation, 115.3. We spend at 118.1. Um, you spend at 119%. Bedford spends at 156%. So Bedford might have a foundation budget of $9,000 per pupil, but they actually spend about $13,500 per pupil. That's comparing apples to apples. And the reason why it's comparing apples to apples is because state aid is determined by that formula. For example, in your case, the town of Wilmington historically received approximately, approximately <coughs> 20 cents of every foundation dollar that, that, uh, that, uh, that, the, that the Chapter 70 uh, formula called for. When the Chapter 70 formula was redone in 2007, the state took a look at Wilmington and they said, holy Toledo, that town should be getting 40 cents for every dollar they spent. Your state aid, Wilmington's chapter 78, because of a couple of factors. One of them is your enrollment went up significantly in one year. Your state aid has been going like this because you were only getting 20 cents on the dollar. I see. And the goal the Commonwealth had was to get you to about 39 cents on the dollar. Shawshank Tech at the same time was only getting about 22, 23 cents on the dollar in state aid. Our target share is now 37 cents. And so that's why we benefited both Shawshin and Wilmington in terms of additional state aid over the course of the past three or four years is because of the foundation budget, the way it's computed, and the target share. And the target share is determined, the state takes a look at the wealth of the community as measured by both property wealth and income wealth. The way they look at Shawshin Tech is they take into consideration the wealth of the five communities. Uh, and so foundation budget's really important because it, it really takes a look at what are you spending compared to other Vogue Tech schools? Shushing Tech is right in the middle in terms of Vogue Tech schools. We're not the high, Minute Man's the high. They're probably around 30 grand. We're at about 18.4 or so. Uh, and the low might be around 14.5, which is in Shoba Tech. Uh, conversely, you're not way over the state average, which is 115%. You're at 119%. So what you spend on kids is a little above the state average, and what we spend on kids is a little bit above the state average when you compare us to, uh, to the foundation budget. And that's why, that's why we do these comparisons. Because if, uh, again, if we put 22 students in a, in a plumbing shop trying to redo a bathroom, you wouldn't be able to teach, you wouldn't be able to teach much of anything at all. Thank you. I appreciate the, uh, the expansion on that, that slide. Yeah. There was a lot of information there. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Beautiful. Um, any questions or comments from the audience? Oh, beautiful. I thank you very much for coming out here. Great presentation. Obviously, a lot of work went into this project before this evening and getting to this point. And Mr. Gillis and Mr. Peterson, I thank you also for being here tonight. I, I just want to accept the praise. It's really indicative of the work, the hard work of our teachers and students. And I want to let the town manager know that it looks like we're going to have 10 more Wilmington students at Shawshank Tech next year versus this year. So obviously that will be reflective in the foundation budget next year as well. <laughs> Not to our advantage. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> They're probably all quarterbacks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks. Very good. Our 745 appointment is with Amanda Muncy, Vice President of Wilmington Farmers Market Association. Proposal to establish a farmers market in Wilmington. Mrs. Muncy? Hi, gentlemen. I'm Amanda Muncy, the Vice Hi, President, Amanda. and this is Dana Burnham. She's a president. She's going to give the presentation, and I'll just be up here for questions. Thank you for your time. Okay. Could you just state your name again for Dana the Dana Burnham. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I'd like to um, start with an opening statement. Mr. Kyra, Mr. Smaglia, members of the board, we are here tonight because of our belief that a successful farmer's market will be a great asset to Wilmington, enhancing the local sense of community and the local economy, as well as creating an opportunity for residents of other towns to discover Wilmington. Having a strong community building role is one of the most important keys to a successful farmer's market. A su successful farmer's market is much more than just a place to buy vegetables. It is a place where the community can gather and connect with each other in a friendly and informal way while they are shopping at the market and participating in different featured activities each week. 
These activities could include watching local performers and craftspeople, learning about local farming and nutrition, and participating in children's and family activities, all in a fun, festive atmosphere. A good farmer's market is a family and community event that people look forward to, and not just another stop on a list of weekly chores. The location of a farmer's market is especially important in creating this kind of community building atmosphere. The Old Swain School site is ideally situated for people to linger and enjoy the sense of community fostered by the market. The farmer's market is a perfect use of municipal land, much in the way the nearby town common is a gathering place for the community. As a dynamic community activity, a farmer's market has an essential responsibility to be a good neighbor to local businesses. We feel strongly that the farmer's market will be, a po will be positive for local businesses. The market will draw people to Wilmington and they will likely linger and shop at local businesses, perhaps returning to them on other days as well. We hope you will support the location of the farmer's market at the Old Swain School site. We believe this location will be especially important to the success of the farmer's market, and a successful farmer's market will be an asset to the entire Wilmington community. <clears throat> um, so continuing with our presentation, which um, is missing a page. So I have a, you'll see when we get to the spot what's missing. So I have copies for everyone. Um, so uh, the association has a board of directors. Um, I'm the president. Amanda is the vice president. Our clerk, Don Reedy, is here. Um, uh, Stan Danswitz is our director of technology. And Diane Lovine is our treasurer. Um, we also have a couple of other members of the, of the association here as well. Our marketing coordinator, Maria O'Donnell, and Lisa Ward, who's our photographer. Um, so the reason we are here tonight, as I stated before, is um, we're asking for your support for having the market on the Swain School site. Um, Amanda appeared before you in April, and you had some questions for us, so we'd like to answer those. And we'd also like to update you on our progress since we were here last. Um, so after we were here, um, we actually put out a call um, via the town crier saying we were going to, um, uh, if people were interested in having a farmer's market, please come to a meeting at the library. So since then, we've um, met monthly. Um, we've done a lot of research. We've relied on the Mass Department of Agricultural Resources for um, guidance on creating a farmer's market. Um, they have a lot of um, online resources that have been really, really helpful in um, helping us to understand exactly what we're undertaking. Um, we've also contacted other area markets, which has been really wonderful. People are very forthcoming with their information. There's a really nice amount of support out there um, for this kind of activity. Um, we've created a mission statement, um, which is here to provide a place where our members of our community can purchase a diverse and interesting selection of locally grown fresh fruits and vegetables and locally produced goods from small Massachusetts farms. Um, we have. Uh, guiding principles, um, uh, market rules, a business plan. We've filed with the state as a um, corporation, which was a first step to filing as a nonprofit business. So we're in the works on that. Um, we have a steering committee um, of various roles. Uh, we have a website, which you can uh, check out. Uh, we've done an online survey that, survey. that was one of the things that the Mass Department of Agricultural Resources site recommended we do to help us understand if people were actually interested in having a farmer's market. Um, so actually when we did this, the presentation, almost 400 households had responded, but it's actually over 400 at this point. And our mailing list is actually over 100 names as of this point. And we have a Facebook group, and it's, uh, I think it's 202 members right now. Um, so one of the things that our research did find out um, was of the 195 farmers markets operating in the Commonwealth, uh, 132 use municipal property and 63 sell on private property. So that, that's either a town common for the municipal land. It could be a town common, um, town park. Um, there are even a few places where they, they close a shopping district on a Sunday morning or something like that um, to hold a market. Um, the other thing we found out is that accessibility, visibility, and a great setting aid market success. Other area markets have told us that's a really key issue. Um, and the reasons we think the Swain School site is perfect is, number one, it's green. It's a beautiful, beautiful site. Um, there are trees for shade. Um, there's ample parking. 
its uh, central and visible location. And we also feel that since it's on Middlesex app and the parking's right there, there's not going to be an issue with people coming and having to cross a busy street. Um, so that was actually the page that was missing. Um, so for our survey results, um, it was a 10 question survey. Like I said, over 400 people responded. More than half of the people um, think that organically grown produce is very important and that is what we're hoping our market will sell. That's uh, the farmers that we'll reach out to will be um, farmers growing organic foods. Um, you can see over 90% rated quality and freshness of produce as very important. Um, a large number of respondents, I can't remember the exact number, but 80 or 90% thought um, Saturday morning would be a great time to have a market. Um, a pretty good majority thought Sunday morning would be a great time to have a market. The committee as a whole, we actually don't have a preference. That's what, one of the reasons we asked um, in our survey what people thought would be would work for them and their families. Um, and every person who responded to the survey answered all 10 questions. And quite a few of them left um, really, really wonderful comments, um, which are, um, there's a sample of them on the next slide, which I know is, is hard to read. But later in this packet, we actually printed out um, all the comments that we um, had gotten from people in, when we put this packet together. They're still coming in, um, and they're still really wonderfully positive. Um, also in this packet um, is our business plan. And just for some highlights of that, um, we're hoping to begin um, the market in the summer of 2011. Right here it says June. We also have some information that for a first year out, um, it's better to have a short market, maybe starting mid-July, um, when there's a more abundant um, availability of fruits and vegetables. Um, the early growing season is a lot of leafy greens and not that much variety. So um, if we want to start with a, a big bang and really interest people, we might be better off initially starting in July and going into the fall. Um, <clears throat> one of our goals is to um, establish strategic relationships with local businesses that share um, our goals of improved health awareness um, for the community. Um, we've estimated our startup costs at $2,000. Um, we hope to raise that money through sponsorships, through local businesses, perhaps a fundraiser or a membership drive. Um, and once we get going, our recurring revenue will be generated by vendor fees. Um, we will purchase insurance, liability insurance, through the Massachusetts Association of Farmers Markets. And that's also included in our estimated startup costs. Um, not in this packet, um, but I do have a copy of, if you're interested in it, is um, the market rules that we've put together for our market. And this is just a sampling on this slide of what we're intending. Um, a maximum of 18 10 by 10 booths, 12 of them devoted to farmers, and the balance devoted to uh, either community groups or um, local artisans, um, maybe a bakery or cheese maker or something along those lines. Um, we think a weekly vendor fee of $25 per booth is reasonable. Um, we'd like farmers to be no more than 40 miles away from Wilmington and in Massachusetts, ensuring that whatever's brought to the market is fresh. Um, and uh, there are other things here that are in the market rules, just as highlights. Um, so our next steps are to secure a location um, to meet with public safety and public health officials. Um, to fill our steering committee positions. We still would um, love someone to step up um, as a legal counsel, um, volunteer some time. Um, we're looking for somebody to maybe um, be a sponsorship coordinator for us. There are a few other positions that we think are key for a market. Um, and we do need to fund um, sponsors and um, some other kind of fundraising. So in conclusion, uh, many farmers markets in Massachusetts are held on municipal sites. Location is a key factor in a market success. The Swain School site has high visibility and many other features that make it desirable, as I stated before. Um, while a farmers market is a new idea for Wilmington, many residents enthusiastically welcome and support it. Farmers markets help build a sense of community. 
so we're requesting that you vote to approve having the farmers market on the Swain School site. We're available for questions, and thank you again for your time. Thank you. Nice, uh, nice presentation here. Um, thank just you. off the top of my head, there, um, have you contacted our Board of Health? Um, um, Amanda's actually spoken with Shelley Newhouse. Um, and I know one of her concerns is that we have sanitary facilities. Um, so that is in our startup costs. Um, we'd have to either, uh, we would rent, um, you know, a portage on or something like that. One of our hopes with the Swain School site is that we could have access to the 4th of July building. And our thought was maybe through some of the fees that we raise, um, with the farmers, we could make a donation to the 4th of July committee because we, we're a nonprofit. We're not looking to make money off of the farmers market. So, okay. And I didn't notice anywhere that the, any other um, board of health where these other uh, markets are, they have like different permits. I, I'm just not sure we've ever obviously gone through something like right. this. So I'm not sure what kind of permits or it's, it's that you would need. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I actually spoke to Shelley Newhouse, and there is a, a form a paper um, for the state where are you saying like what the vendors will have to? Is that what you're concerned about? What the vendors right, will have absolutely. to do? Right, um, absolutely. As a vendor, and that's what my position will be um, with the Farmers Market Association. A vendor will have to get licensed through Shelley Newhouse or through the Board of Health, and they can only sell fresh eggs, um, fresh produce, and jams and jellies, and that's it, unless she approves otherwise. Uh, but according to the state regulations, that's the only thing that's allowed at a farmer's market. Um, and of course, that will be my position to go with the vendors um, to get that approval from her. Okay. The other things too, is in our market rules, we are requiring um, vendors to carry their own insurance. They, we won't accept them into the market unless they have insurance. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the board? Uh, just one comment, <clears throat> at least for now. Uh, in your list of uh, action items at some point in the methodology, mm -hmm. somewhere here, you have, um, you know, one of the uh, priorities is to uh, to get a secure location. Here we go, mm -hmm. next steps. Secure location, meet with public safety and public health officials, fill steering committee positions and find sponsors and funding. Um, from my perspective, part and parcel of what the board uh, needs to do is to get some input from public safety and public health officials, even in regards to your request to secure the location. And I know that sometimes when you're going through a regulatory process mm -hmm. of sorts, uh, especially if it's fairly new in any given place, as uh, this would Absolutely. be in Wilmington, sometimes you have to travel a couple of tracks at the same time. So right. it, it, I, I'm not... Um, I don't have any negative reaction to to your proposal and to some of the things that you're suggesting, other than I, notwithstanding your representations about how many towns offer municipal land, still want to have some meaningful feedback from legal counsel, public safety, and public health in order to, you know, to uh, take on that that specific request for a location, and uh, and certainly I'm, I would expect that the manager can can take. Your presentation, um, you know, develop some of the information you've provided, run it by um, Shelly Newhouse as well as others, and, and just make sure that we have as much information as we can. That would be great. <clears throat> I mean, if there's anything that you want us to do as far as meeting with um, public safety, public health, we're, we'd love to do that as well. I, and it, uh, just as a general comment, uh, I think you would find it uh, more efficient if, if nothing to work through the manager's office to make sure that you're touching all the bases at once. So um, while it certainly is great that you've um, been proactive trying to get some of this information, that, that's great. But I think what we, you know, we, can, we rely as, as a volunteer board, we rely uh, quite a bit on the manager's ability to get all of his departmental people on the same page in terms of information and review and making <coughs> recommendations to this board. So. Um, so not, nothing negative, uh, no guarantees. Let's continue to work through the administrative people, get some of that review that you've kind of scratched the surface on. And okay. it sounds like gotten even some meaningful information. <clears throat> Make sure we, we can avail ourselves of that same information. I'll put. I think it's a good 
this great idea. Um, you know, I, I would be in support of it as far as, the, like you said, health and safety. Uh, we get by that. I, I have no problem with this. Um, I think it's a great, great idea for the uh, community. Great. Especially with health and uh, <laughs> we were just putting a wing on the uh, school ahead of you, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I make uh, no false impressions there. I'm, I'm real bullish about this. Uh, I've been excited about when you first came and presented the concept, and obviously it was just sort of just kicking the tires a little bit, um, but I got excited about the notion of it and was hopeful that we collectively could find a, a good place for this to be set up. Obviously, location, location. Mm -hmm. right? You set up the best market and the worst location, and it oh, may absolutely. not succeed. So uh, I'm really excited, and I hope that we, uh, I, I think it's just logistics um, that need to be worked through, like Mr. Newhouse mm -hmm. just said. We'll get through uh, the legal people and the fire and the police and the health, and, and we'll, we'll you can dot all your I's and cross all your T's, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm confident um, that Mr. Kyra and his team will, will get and help you uh, navigate that path. Um, but I also, I'm, I'm excited to hear my colleagues here being generally in, in support of the idea, because I do believe that the town um, needs to be supportive and, and will benefit from being supportive to this type of an activity within our, within our border. So, uh, I think we all stand to benefit, uh, you know, as as a as a community, but also for the uh, you know the, the individuals that run the the event. So, uh, congratulations, uh, good luck, and continue the process. And um, I'm excited to continue to hopefully support it. Thank you. Very good. And as Mr. Newhouse said, it'd be very important for you to work with the town manager here, and I might have some questions here tonight. I just had a few questions, Mr. Sure. Chairman, and I may uh, you may have answered them, and, and again. Um, we're at a little bit of a disadvantage because we just got these books I understand. today, and I'm just trying to go through that and listen to you at the same time. Can you tell us what other sites were investigated? Sure. Um, I actually, in your in your packet, um, there's a letter from um, the um, Wakefield town manager, um, and uh, there's also a letter from the Bedford town manager, um, both of which have their markets on town land. So I specifically emailed four. No, no, I mean, what other sites did you investigate in the town of Wilmington? Oh, we actually haven't. We really um, thought that the Swain School site was a great site. Um, so we haven't, if we can't get that, then we'll start looking for other sites. And we're planning okay, for a Okay, it was my understanding that when we met the last time, there was some concern about the, the Swain School site and that you were going to look at other other various uh, I, options, but okay. So well, the answer is you have not. No, we have not. Okay. We 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 felt like um, we had it was better for us to have one direction, and if that fell through, then we'll investigate um, other places, whether it's um, other municipal land or uh, private land. We the, felt going in, you know, twelve pursuing twelve different things at once wasn't. Okay. Okay. Gonna uh, work. You indicate that um, you believe in a. Quote you, we feel strongly that the farmer's market will be positive for local businesses. The market will draw people to Wilmington and they will likely linger and shop at local businesses. Do you have, you know, I, I guess I would, I would have some concern about, about businesses that may be um, selling the same product. Do you right. have uh, some uh, empirical data that supports what you said? There are reports. I, I could, I, I definitely have, um, read reports um, from different organizations, I don't have them off the top of my head, um, showing that farmers markets do have a positive economic impact on towns. But I would encourage you to read the comments from people, the fuller comments in the back here. There are plenty of people who leave town to do their vegetable shopping, right. their fruits and vegetable shopping. And I know I, if I go to another town to do my, one kind of shopping, I'm also going to do the rest of my shopping there at the same time. So now, just would on a these markets level. be in a com this? The Swain School site, of course, is not in a commercial area. So, would True. these markets that you're referring to, based upon this uh, comment, be in a commercial area, or would they be in? Many a of them are, but others aren't. So, yeah, I think that would definitely. We don't have a town common that's ringed by businesses. Hmm. So, right, you're right. But I think there are people who. There are, the surrounding towns don't have farmers markets, so people from Woburn or Bill Ricker, um, Andover does have one. North Reading, um, the other towns would be coming to Wilmington for the farmers market, um, so some of them, it's right. likely that they would. 
do other shopping while they're here. Can you, I think that the uh, chairman mentioned this a little bit, Can you? could you provide us with that list of other municipal sites? You said there were a hundred and some odd municipal sites sure. that you did a survey. Could you, yeah. you could provide that to us? Um, are the members of the association board all from Wilmington? They are. Okay. Um, will the town be named as an insured? I believe that's right. I have just started looking into insurance, and I admit insurance is something I don't understand at all. No um, one does. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, the insurance is to protect the market and the town. And the town. So the yes. town will be named as an insurer. Right. That's the right. Policy. Um, would the would vendors from Wilmington receive a preference? That's not in our market rules, but that's a great idea. Um, what? Yeah. I don't. Uh, I don't know. We have any. We, How does it work, I guess, is the question. I mean, obviously the, the board must select people. You must solicit folks. Uh, and I, I, right. I saw briefly in here where you said they must be farmers with, mm -hmm. with 10 them. acres or less and right. that kind of thing. Right. Um, and I'm not sure how many of those would, would be in Wilmington, but um, I'm just wondering if Wilmington folks would receive preference. Uh, and I, I guess I would recommend that if, in fact, the board gives approval right well I'm a farmer I live in Wilmington so right. uh, you know if I decide to sell my stuff there you know I could be approved your farm is in Wilmington my farm is in Drake it but I'm a resident of Wilmington okay. so I farm in Drake it and I'm a resident in Wilmington um, we would give preference to I don't know how many farms are in Wilmington, but you know, if there were so Wilmington farms and Wilmington residents like yourself, if they yes, if they had an artisan, if they were a vendor that we, um, you know, an artisan cheese maker or a baker, um, someone like that. It, the, the other thing is, well, what is the? I notice in here that you talked about a Saturday or a Sunday mm -hmm. as being the best day, and I think the board needs to look at that very carefully. Is that what you're recommending? <laughs> Well, like I said, we're, we, none of us who have met over these past months have any preference. And other farmers markets are all over the map on okay. what, what their times are. There, and there are advantages and disadvantages. Bedford's market goes from 2 to 6 on Mondays. Um, Acton's is Sunday mornings. They, and they, do, they close off a street in their business district. Um, you know, if it's on the weekend, you, you get families who are out, out running their errands, maybe going you know, back and forth from a soccer game or baseball practice or whatever. Um, but if you, we do it in the week and during the week in the afternoon, then you're getting the people who work in town. There's that mm -hmm. whole population. So um, we don't really have a recommendation. We just know that of the 400 plus households that responded, I think it's like 90 something percent thought Saturday morning was the best time to have the market. And you know, that's when people in I, town have the time available. I think the so. board would need to probably have a sense of that based upon a location, for example, mm -hmm. historically, when you mentioned Sunday morning, for example, at that location, uh, the board has historically not uh, scheduled anything at that site mm -hmm. in deference to the various churches that are in the area right. they've never they've never done yeah. that um, do you do you know what time frame you're talking about I don't mean in terms of hours but in terms of months um, initially we'd hope to go mid July probably into late September okay and I and I asked that again uh, because a, a Saturdays could be difficult once you get into the school season right, at yeah. the Swain site. Right, so that's why are, we... There are, and that's one of right. the... I'm, I'm not trying to discourage no, the Swain I site. I agree with you. If I was sitting on that side of the mm -hmm. table, I would be saying right. what a great location that is. But I think the town is going to need some information in, in order to make a, a final decision so that the location and timing of the operation doesn't right. interfere with other other activities. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think that's, that's one of the reasons we had public safety on our list of we know we know we need to find out about this so you'd be talking maybe um, 12 weeks or something like that 10 12 yeah. weeks mm -hmm. right yep okay. mr. chairman just to that point um, you know my initial concerns the last time that you folks were in it's been a while now but you know my concerns right out of the gate were making sure that it doesn't create some legal headaches for the town, um, notwithstanding that it's done somewhere else. And secondly, that we consider uh, all the locations. So I would just ask, <clears throat> understanding your strategy was 
you know, to, to focus on one location, I still think it makes sense to work uh, through the manager to try and avail yourself of three, four alternatives, whatever might make sense, uh, you know, when the board gets pressed on a, you know, in a, a situation of making a decision and saying yes or no. So if there are viable alternatives, I think that um, you ought to take a look at them and and uh, that way the board has a couple of viable alternatives. Okay, are, are you, can I ask, are you, when you say viable alternatives, are you speaking of municipal land or are you asking us to see if we can uh, find e a private business? E either one, okay. either one, yeah. yeah. That's a good point, private or municipal. Right, private is definitely a backup for us, but like I said, we didn't want to be going in five or 10 different directions at yeah. once. Um, we just really love the site and <laughs> my, my only point Mr. Chairman is that if it's going to be on uh, municipal property that we that there are uh, this more information that we'll need mm -hmm. in order to you know or at least I mean it's obviously it's the board's decision but in order for me to give a recommendation to the board we'll need additional information if it's going to be on municipal property if it's going to be on a private location then the board has some involvement, but Absolutely. certainly not to the to the right. extent that it would on a municipal property. Right, but I guess my my point is it's about alternatives. If you, if, right. you know, I, I as I say, I I take on at face value that there are a number of Wilmington residents who would avail themselves of a of a resource like this. So, if we're going to be a conduit of making that resource available, but you know, I just want to make sure we don't make it available at the wrong place at the wrong time. And mm -hmm. wrong place, wrong time is some sometimes relative to what else might be available. You know, that might be at no cost to the town. At, you know, to get the additional insured, no prospective liability to the town. So, you know, and I, I certainly don't expect that you would contact every business owner in Wilmington that, you know, is sitting on three acres or more of land. But, but I do think it's just a simple dialogue with the manager's office could probably shortlist potential municipal sites, potential, uh, if nothing else, business areas, mm -hmm. you know, that might make sense at least to take a look at. I mean, when we start talking about promoting economic development and that, you know, prospective buyers at the market might, you know, uh, patronize other Wilmington businesses, well, okay, where's our, where's our business located? Now that... Mm -hmm. With a dialogue with the manager and, and other folks, uh, public safety folks, you might just you might just say, well, honestly, that doesn't work for us that 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 area. But at least we could be to a short list of municipal land, possibly uh, shortlisted to privately owned business areas, and that I think that just helps us make a decision that can assist you in bringing this resource to the to the community. If I may, Mr. Chairman, to that point. Uh, Mr. Newhouse, if I'm a little, I guess, reluctant um, to completely support everything you just said, because I don't want to send them off in a, in a tangent looking at multiple sites in multiple days, if town council, the public safety, public health folks agree that there's no inherent detriment to having this type of an operation on the Swain School, just the site, I'm not talking about time or what day or what whatever, just speaking about this type of entity on that site. If there's no detriment based on any of those uh, uh, departments, then the next step in my mind is, okay, when can they run it? And if public safety or whomever are the, um, uh, the influencing departments suggest, hypothetically, Sunday afternoon from one to six. Now all the religious services, I believe, probably are over, whatever. I'm just hypothesizing here. If, if a time is dictated or determined to be the perfect time and that site isn't a problem site, then I don't feel like I need for them to come back and say, okay, here's site number one that we that all these public safety and, and uh, our, our <coughs> department heads have indicated have no negative. I'm not sure I need to hear that uh, Waltham Street is a is another viable location, or that uh, Whitfield School is another viable location. It seems like now we're asking them to to do a, a research project, um, but I'm not saying they shouldn't do it. I just I would rather have them come back to me with the town manager's uh, recommendations from our department heads on that specific site. If that site becomes a problem site, 
then, then right. absolutely let's go to plan B and look for plan C and plan D or whatever the case may be. That's my perspective on this. Your perspective is I think you want them to go and have alternative uh, sites kind of now, and I'm not sure. It seems like a little bit of a, of a, of a work project. Well, that, what I had in, just to use your, your scenarios and your examples, um, what if, uh, if from, a, uh, from the board's perspective, from a public safety perspective, uh, Saturday mornings at the, at the Swain School site's not a that's not a great time. Mm -hmm. You know, between this athletic event that right. might be going on at the high school, uh, some uh, church related events in that neighborhood that I'm not even aware of, you know, that Saturday mornings in that location isn't great. But Saturday mornings down at the Whitfield is fine. Or well, Saturday mornings at a church uh, church parking lot. Name name your church that may. Be interested in, in doing something like this that may be located more approximately to uh, Wilmington businesses. I, I just feel as though there ought to be a dialogue, and I, I don't think we have to, you know, as I say, send them researching every property alternative to death. But it it seems to me that having a dialogue with the town through the administrative offices would be a good idea to come up with a couple alternatives. That's all. And, and you came up with a couple, I think, just by making an example yeah. you know I think there's there's other possibilities out there I appreciate it mr. chairman uh, just like to ask a question is this something um, you're looking to get started by this year no next summer okay. is what so we're hoping for yep. so I guess all the questions you're asking are going back and forth we have plenty of time for recommendations through um, Board of Health safety and town manager recommendations I guess and then back to us so I think um, you, you know there's plenty of time I guess to, to get this thing anchor down I should say I agree and I think working with the association what you've done here is <clears throat> a lot of information from the last time you came in yeah. so I don't want I don't want you to think that we're um, sending you on a wild goose chase or something like um, um, to have to investigate every no, I, I, I don't feel that way I mean all along we've the Swain school is what site is what we've sort of pictured in our mind as the perfect place but every discussion we have is also if that doesn't work out, then um, you know what other sites are there that would right. you know who do we know in business? Uh, what about the churches? All the things that you you are suggesting, um, you know those are Plan B, Plan C. That said, n none of us I think can drive past the Swain School <laughs> without <laughs> looking at it and thinking it's perfect. I mean it's really hard to find something that compares. Okay, Mr. Jim, can you just add to that? Maybe. Um, where the difficulty is on times and, and, and um, um, to these areas, maybe we should um, ask um, to send over like um, Papuana or the Wilmington High School because of basket uh, base, uh, yeah, football, baseball, uh, Papuana to see what these hours are because you know we could come back, but still, if we have a, um, a written from these organizations saying, you know, Wilmington High School has Friday nights, Saturdays, and possibly Sundays. Uh, well, I think that's where working with the town manager's office so would They can get all that handled. related to them. Yeah, I, th I think, uh, I don't think you'd have to reach out to Pop Warner, say, because yeah. they're usually right that back That was just using as an example. Yeah, yeah. but um, I think working with the town manager's office, um, and he'll help with town council and Board of Health and all the other things, I think we should be, we'll be able to get a little better grasp of what you're, uh, what you're looking for, what okay. we can do. That sounds great. Excellent. We'll get you there. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Nice presentation, by the way. That's okay. Um, Continue on with correspondence, I guess. Oh, Mr. Right. Chairman, the board is being asked to consider the request from Deborah Cipriani, the recreation director, uh, to use the town common and gazebo for the <coughs> summer concert series on Tuesday, August 17th, from 6:30 <coughs> to 8 p.m. She's requesting um, making this request because the concert that was scheduled for July 14th was postponed due to inclement weather, and the group. Uh, which is an a cappella group called Peking and the Mystics. Uh, the only date, the other date that they're available during the summer is on that Tuesday, August 17th. So it's a board to consider. Is there any other conflicts on that thing? In fact, Mr. Chairman, the board had given 
approval to the Wilmington Minutemen on that date to um, practice. I was not at that meeting, but to practice on the common on that particular date. Okay, that's the only other conflict on that date. That's I, the only other conflict that I'm aware of, yes. Okay, I, I don't think that would be an issue if uh, if we agreed to have this concert. I've seen I have seen the Minutemen out there practice, and there was three of them out there last week I saw. Put off to another date or skip that night. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I don't think there'd be any conflict with that's that. That's the last night that's scheduled for that's the uh, last night that's, that's Minutemen scheduled. exercises. I'd rather, I will say I'd, I'd rather see uh, this gate go down. <laughs> this sounds more exciting. Okay, so any other... Um, that That is the last date that they have scheduled to yes, practice sir. on it? Okay. And even if you did want to practice, like I said last week, I saw three years over on the other side towards the back of the common, so that wouldn't be as big a deal, even if it was a big crowd, for which I'm sure it will be. Any so, other questions, comments, or a motion? I would move to approve the use of the uh, town common on Tuesday, August 17th, from 6.30 to 8, uh, for the uh, music group, uh, as uh, as described. All second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Unanimous. Are you, are you directing me to I'm sorry, yes. uh, <laughs> indicate to the... Uh, uh, Wilmington Minutemen officially that they you're, you're rescinding or you are asking that they not? Well, I think uh, um, notify Frank West okay. that there'll be a concert on the common. That yeah, I'll, I, I'll call them. I believe during that meeting that they said if anything comes up, yes. they'll right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so. They specifically stated that uh, if there were any conflicts, they would be more than willing to yeah. reschedule or relocate. So. Uh, board's being asked to consider signing the warrant for the state primary to be held on Tuesday, September 14th, 2010. Uh, the polls will be open on that date from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, in order for uh, voters to cast ballots in the state primary for candidates of political parties for the following offices. Governor, Lieutenant Governor, Attorney General, Secretary of State, Treasurer, and Auditor, all for the Commonwealth. Representative in Congress for the 6th District, Counselor for the 5th District, Senator in the General Court for the 1st Essex and Middlesex, Representatives in General Court for the 19th and 21st Middlesex, uh, the District Attorney for Northern District, and the Sheriff for Middlesex County. Questions, comments, or a motion? Move to sign the warrant for the state primary on Tuesday, September 14th. I'll second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that concludes the regular business before the Board of Selectmen. Okay. Any new business committee reports? I think so. No. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to um, have you look into a, um, uh, if a um, uh, stop sign needs to be put up at Washington Ave. I had an inquiry about it. And uh, so whatever the procedure is, if we could look at that. Washington Ave on Clark Street. Uh, yeah, yeah, Washington Street off of Clark Street. Uh, Clark Street going yeah. on to it. Okay. Okay. Any other uh, new business committee reports? No committee reports. I'd just simply like to compliment um, every resident who participated in Fourth of July activities uh, and did so uh, in a positive manner. I'd certainly like to compliment the uh, Fourth of July committee for putting on a another successful and, and wonderful year. I think it was a, it was a heck of a week. It certainly was. Kind of missed public comments. Is there any public comments out there? Actually, Chairman, I did have a quick one or a question. Uh, George, let me talk about Crawford Street. I was looking at the uh, Havens bylaws over the weekend, along with the zoning regulations and the planning water regulations, and the matter we're looking into. And I noticed in Chapter 592, Section 5, multiple officers uh, talks about who can and can't serve on boards and how and when and appointments and so forth. And it occurred to me that we currently, this, my understanding is, have a school committee member that's also a member of the Conservation Commission, and that would appear, as I noticed this weekend, to be in nonconformity with Chapter 592, Section 5. I was wondering if there's any comment on that. I was not aware of that, if, if that's what you're asking here. I okay. mean, I don't yeah. know if anyone else was, but we could definitely look into that, the town council. Um, yeah, yeah I mean, uh, there is an individual 
to right. his yeah. it seems to, it didn't on the school committee and on the conservation commission. I, I guess it would be his responsibility. Looks like section five says he only can be in one or the other. Right. I yeah. Okay. I'm just curious about that. I think it would be his responsibility to step down. I guess one or, one or the other. I can't. One or the other. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, I I can't make that decision for him. I don't yeah. think any of us can. Well, but shouldn't it, the town, you know, let him know that you pick one? Serve on both. I'll take whatever direction the board gives me. What are the ramifications of of this kind of a thing? I mean, obviously, if it, I assume you're right. Um, assuming that's the case, what is the? It's a it's a violation of bylaw. What's what's the downside here? And it's a would be a stupid question, but what what's the precedent, or is there any? I I would I mean, be happy if the board wants to direct a question to council, but I, I don't. Uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of the ramifications, I, I don't know that the I wouldn't have known the reference, but um, I recognize that you know the summary of that. Um, I know I've seen it before. Why don't we? Yeah, you know, I, I would. I would just say that the question's been raised. Um, you know, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure the individual in question is going to hear about it. Probably going to have to do anything. He's going to find out what he's supposed to do based on, on this public discussion. But there's no reason why you can't ask council if, if the Board of Selectmen has any obligation or yeah. or it's incumbent on the board to do anything. Certainly we should know that. Right. If, if, we're, if we're supposed to take action, I want to make sure we don't turn a blind eye to it. That's my feeling on the subject. Just as a comment, I know that there was another member elected to the um, Board of Selectmen several years ago that was a member of the CAP and she had to resign from the CAP as a result of the election, so that's the president that I was familiar with. I was kind of, I was just like I say, I was going through all the documents with, with a fine tooth comb looking for an answer to another question, and this popped out at me. I just wanted to bring it to your attention. Can you, Thank you. repeat where it's found again, please? It was uh, in the inhabitants bylaws, chapter 592, section 5, multiple offices. That's the town charter. This is the town charter, which is at the end of the bylaws. I I'm sure I have access to this. I wasn't worried either. I didn't say I was just going. I'm looking for an answer to something else. I went through everything pretty close. Thank you. Thank you. And important dates. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we do have a constant on the common schedule for this Wednesday, July 21st. Um, the group is uh, called Instant Replay. It's actually a Wilmington um, band. Uh, July 28th, Concert on the Common uh, finishes with Quintessential Brass. Both of those concerts go from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Uh, remind residents who are interested that August 5th is Beach Day at the Town Beach, a uh, cooperative venture between the Wilmington Police Association and the uh, Town's Recreation Department. Uh, residents are invited to attend the activities from 11 to 2 p.m., 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. on August 5th. And then we have brush drop-off dates in, the, in August for, for August 11th and August 14th at Old Main Street. August 11th is a Wednesday. The uh, uh, Recycling Center is open from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. and August 14th, a Saturday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The board's next meeting is scheduled for August 16th. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Entertain a motion that we go to executive session for the purpose of discussing collective bargaining, not to return to open session. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Voice vote? Aye. Yes. 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 Are you unanimous? Oh, see, aye. 